Hello, Mr. Bergson, Rabbi Shimon, Simon. Hello, how are you? Baruch Hashem. Tell us about yourself, please. Well, first off, I, I am Simon Bergson, and I am the president and chief executive officer and the founder of a company called Manhattan Beer Distributors. We are the largest beer distributor in New York City, uh, one of the largest distributors in the country, actually. But I didn't start, I wasn't born as a beer distributor, and I didn't start as a beer distributor. Uh, I was born in a displaced persons camp after the Muhammad, after the war. I was born in a town called Halein, Halein by Salzburg in Austria. I was born in 1948. My parents were both survivors of Auschwitz. They met in Auschwitz, they were liberated together, and they got married. They were from the same hometown, Chechenov in Poland. Uh, I grew up in Brooklyn in Brighton Beach. Uh, I went to, uh, t- uh, I went to, not to Yeshiva, I went to Talmud Torah, to Hebrew school, at the Hebrew Alliance on Brighton 6th Street and, uh, Brighton 6th Street and, I forgot the name of the street. Uh, in Brighton Beach? In Brighton Beach, yeah, Neptune Avenue, sorry. That's oh, Neptune, we just opened a restaurant last week there. Uh, ne- but the Neptune water, yeah. Neptune. So I, I'm, I, I went to Hebrew school there. Uh, when I was about uh, eight or nine years old, I got thrown out of Hebrew school because I really wasn't paying attention to the teacher, and I think I threw a, a, an eraser at the teacher on the blackboard. But anyway, the rabbi had rachmunas on my parents because they were survivors, and the rabbi said, don't worry, I'll take your son and I'll teach him. And he taught me with a tape recorder all of the prayers for my bar mitzvah. I studied for over five years, maybe six years, with that tape recorder. I davened Musaf, I did my Haftar, I did my Torah, I did Shacharit, I did all of the davening that I had to do. I was the cantor for the day. And that was probably the last time that I was in a synagogue until I got married, maybe 20 years later. Uh, and uh, I now have three wonderful children. They're all grown. I have one daughter and two sons. Uh, the, my two sons are in the business here with me. Uh, and I met Rabbi I, 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 last year, right around just before Pesach. Uh, I encountered this, this rabbi uh, who was sitting in the lobby of my uh, condominium in Manhattan. And I was told that he wanted to speak to me. And I had no idea who he was or what he wanted from me. And... As it turned out, uh, he was very charismatic, and he convinced me to listen to him. And all he really wanted me to do was to make sure that I would take my beer and and go through a ceremony and the proper arrangements to make sure that I would get rid of the chumitz for the ho- for the holidays and make it where Jews can enjoy my beer if they're buying it in the in the streets, whether it be in Brooklyn or in Queens, in the stores from from all of the stores that we service and supply. And at first I didn't want to talk to the rabbi. I thought quite honestly he was just another rabbi looking to either convince me to be more Jewish or I, I don't know what he wanted. So we went to dinner. Uh, I was with my wife and my brother and his wife and we came back and the rabbi was still sitting very patiently waiting and very calmly insisted that all he wants to do is, with, is the right thing for the Jewish community. Uh, I, What's the name of the rabbi? <laughs> rabbi Wein- Kalman Weisfeld. Weinfeld. We- Weinfeld. <laughs> Weinfeld. Sorry, Weinfeld. I spell it Weisfeld, it's Weinfeld. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, and I said, said to the rabbi, okay, come to my, if, if you're serious, come to my office tomorrow. And I was, that was my way of quite trying to see how sincere the man was. And sure enough, the next day, he showed up. With he, his friend. With his friend, Mr. yes. Mr. Sternberg. Yes. Uh, the rabbi convinced me or explained to me what was going on. I sort of knew, but I wasn't totally sure of the, of the procedure. Uh, not only did he get me to sign or to sell my business for the holiday to a non-Jew, he also asked me if I would put on tefillin, which I had not done in over, in over 50 years. Uh, and I put on tefillin that day. And we danced a little bit, and we celebrated, and we had a little schnapps together, a little Widow Jane bourbon, and that's the story of why we're here again today. Pesach, Passover is approaching. It's uh, coming up April 19th. Uh, I want to make sure that, the, uh, that I do the right thing for the Jewish community so everybody can enjoy all of my products this year, as they always do. Uh, and I will be selling my business to Edward McBrien, he is my chief operating officer. Uh, he will buy it for me for, for the holiday. He will buy the business for me for the holidays. He'll pay me for the business. And then after the holidays are over, I'll buy the business back from him. So who, who will make the profit of the business on Pesach? 
Uh, Ed McBrien will make the profits. He will run the business. I will go on vacation. The whole entire Pesach? The whole entire Pesach, yes. Wow. This is something special. So you're not going to be involved in the business and everything that comes in and the profit after all the expense on Pesach belongs to Ed. Yes. Wow. And this is what you did last year. Yes. Yeah, last year, honestly, I did not go on vacation. Yes, just a realize, little bit, you I said. I didn't realize I had to. Since I know about it now... But I you told me last year that a few vacation. days you took vacation. Yes, I did, of course. But yes. not the whole entire Pesach. Yes, I took the first two days, yes, yes. Oh. But this time I'm going to take the whole week because... It forces me to take a vacation, and it's the right thing to do for the community. Wow. What happened the previous years that uh, a few rabbis said that they were trying uh, to arrange the same arrangement? You know, I get, phone, I get phone solicitations. I get mail solicitations by the dozens. Today it's emails. Years ago it used to be you know, regular mail. I get phone calls. Uh, to me, they're, they're just salespeople trying to make sales calls, and quite honestly, I'm a... I'm a I'm a busy individual. I, I built this business from scratch. I have over 1,750 employees. I'm responsible for everything that goes on here. I don't have the patience or the guilt or the time to sometimes just take phone calls that are cold calls. I have a secretary. She t- takes the messages, and I just didn't understand what was going on. And nobody went out of their way, like, that, like Rabbi Weinfeld. <laughs> he went out of his way. He sat in my lobby for maybe two and a half hours until I came back from dinner and he was still there just waiting for me. So we're going to do it this year also with rabbis. This year you don't have to sit two and a half hours in my lab. Uh-huh. You'll come to my office like yes. <laughs> and you'll come right in and we'll, we'll take care of everything. But I promise that the kokash cake will be there again this year. Yes. Yes. Did you like the kokash cake? I did, of course. You remember the kokash yes, cake? Yes, I ate it, of course, yes. Your wife liked it? Yes, yes. Nice. Thank you, Mr. Bergson. Thank you, Rabbi. And we will meet again, and we will do everything according to the Jewish law and the most strictly level. Yes. Thank you so much. You're welcome.